what's up guys it's Ryan here from GF Export today I'm going to be showing you how to use that Baki tutorial I did which is a tutorial I picked up online and I'm going to be showing you how to use the Baki effect and turn it into a wallpaper there's something sim similar like this obviously it won't be the same because I'll be redoing it again and it always changes every time I do something it changes so first off you want to hit up that tutorial I did on the Baki and you have this background here and then you want to find a decent render. I found this guy right here off a website called Premium Renders. I think it's premiumrenders.net or .com. If not, just uh, search Google for Premium Renders. And this is the render of the guy right here. So Control C to copy him. Well, Control A to select, and then Control C to copy him. And then you paste him in, and you just want to free transform him down. So you get them to somewhat of a size that can fit onto the canvas here. As you see on my other wallpaper I did over here, I had a little bit so it looked like his foot was sliding and sparking at the same time. And I'm going to be showing you that effect. That's an effect that I did on the font effect tutorial, glowing font effect tutorial, and there's also going to be another tutorial that I did that's going to be involved with this is which will be the lens flare slash eclipse tutorial so now that we got a render in here we can start to brighten them up uh, start adding some blending modes to them because we want to uh, have an outer glow and you want to add color dodge and you want to use like a light gray so just burst that colors out right there around them as you see it's all starting to blend in pretty decently already and then now we want to go to an inner glow which is going to give us a pretty decent effect here as well in which we want to you can try a white you might want to try color dodge as well just so it makes it look like it's shining in but we're also going to be using a brush here to brush in the color so it looks a lot more uh, brighter than what it looks right now but you don't want to have two breaks you don't want his fingers to blur out like you can see his fingers are totally gone there you can also try uh, an inner shadow and change the and that looks pretty good actually yeah we'll go with the inner shadow on this part here bring the distance up a bit so it's just a little bit more shiny on the front Alright, so now that we got that done, we want to go to our Baki layers, if you did the tutorial, and you want to merge them together, you select them, so you click the top layer, and you go down to the bottom layer, you hold shift down and click, and it selects all the layers, and then you press control E, and it merges all those layers together, and what we're going to do here is, simply just use the rectangular marquee tool, and go up to where his toe is on his shoe there, and what we're going to do here is, press control C, and then we're going to press delete. We're going to get rid of that whole layer right there. We actually we want to go down to our gradient layer now and press delete on that too. So we remove that as well. Now we go up to our Baki layer and we press Control V since it's already copied to our clipboard. And that pastes it in and then just uh, align it up so it looks somewhat aligned. And then now we just want to go down here to our background color and make a new layer above it and what we're going to do here is simply just go up and then fill it in we'll just go with a blue or I'm pretty sure that's what I used on my wallpaper was a blue you just fill it in with blue and as you see it, it blurs it out because this Baki layer is set to because it's in this folder set the color dodge so you might want to go down here and change the hue of it and bring the lightness down just so it doesn't stick out as much. Alright, so we already got this going. Now what we want to do is simply scroll all the way up to the top in our layers window here. Bring this down, close the box of layers because we're pretty much done with those for the time being. And make a new player, uh, a new layer. You can do it above this uh, our character. We'll call this the character. So 
so now we have our layer 9 and we're going to call this the lens flares and what we're going to do is simply paint this in with a black as you see our picture has gone don't worry it will be back filter render lens flare we want to do 105 mm prime and you want to center it as much as possible that looks pretty centered alright now that wait no yeah well yeah we'll center it a little bit more bring that over to the left a little bit it just doesn't want to center for me render lens flare yeah I think that's alrighty well that looks good so you, what you want to do next is filter blur and then Gaussian blur and you just want to blur it out a bit that looks good right there this is a tutorial I did for the eclipse slash lens flare effect and what we do here is edit free transform and what we're going to do is just bring it down so it smushes it out and it's going to make a nice streaking effect for us now that we got our streaking effect we want to bring it up you want to align it with that line that we created by doing the bottom blue part of the bokeh there. And you want to make it look like his foot's already slid quite the distance so it already lit up the floor. Because this is supposed to make it look like a reflection here and I'll be doing the angles and all that stuff soon. So you just go here and then you find a decent uh, blending mode for it. So you start from dissolve you just go down with the arrow keys and you go down until you find something that looks like it will blend in nicely. So you see I'm just pressing the keys down and just going up and I'm thinking for this color dodge is good because what we're going to do now is duplicate the layer and it's going to make it even more brighter. So now we can merge those two layers together and then go back to color dodge. And as you see it brightened it up for us a bit. And you can see the lines right here but we'll be erasing that out when we do the final touches. You can also even play around even try to lighten and even lighten looks good. The lighten looks actually a lot better than the color dodge so I'm going to stick with the lighten. So I'm going to bring that over and you can also even try duplicating the layer and then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to even enhance the lines so I'm holding the shift down and using the arrow keys to move the lines around and I'm probably going to turn this to color dodge just to brighten out the, the flooring here just a little bit more so it makes it look like it's annoying when that does that in Photoshop. Anyways, I'm going to bring that over and just to brighten up the flooring you just keep duplicating the layer and you just want to bring these layers around so they brighten up the floor and they make it look like it's just not perfectly like 100% uh, perspective there. You want to add the the depth into it and the lighting. So so now that we got this effect going on here, you have all these layers up here which are the lens flares. So now what we want to do is start coloring in this dude. So we want to make a new layer and go to clipping mask. And we'll call this the gradient overlay. And what I'm going to do here is simply just pull out my brush tool and use a soft round. Probably 100 yeah 100 is good and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use black because it's going to show me a lot better on this effect right now because it will darken it out for me and I'm just going to make a line around his outside of his body here anywhere that the light might shine or might not shine
Alrighty, so as you see here, I got those lines going on. So you want to right click our gradient tool if you did the bulky tutorial. Uh, you guys really need to do that. Wait. Right click it and go to copy layer style. And once we do that, we want to go up to our gradient overlay that we just did above our character with the clipping mask and paste that layer style in. Now we can go to blending options and it's going to show our gradient that's on the guy here. And we're going to set this to normal. Now that we got that, we want to right click that layer and convert to smart object and then right click it again and go to rasterize layer. And what we can do here is add the color dodge. So it's going to add the colors for us that are blending in with the gradient we had on the background. So it's going to go purple up here on the knee, blue down here, start turning green. And as you see, it's turning the laces a little bit orangey over here because that's just the the color dodge effect when what you get with uh, the yellow and the green here. So what we're going to do is just erase that out. We can erase those out so we can make those laces turn in just a little bit more visible. And his legs a little bit too blue there, so I'm going to erase that out a little bit too. So you can just do your touches with your uh, eraser tool. And what we're going to do now is make a new layer above our Baki folder that we have here and we're going to call this one the spark <coughs> and this is a brush I picked up uh, I don't know I'd say a few months ago it's actually a pretty new brush to me and it's actually a, a great brush to have I've been using it a lot I actually use it in one of my other tutorials so let me find it here and it's called oh, it's only called sample brush I'll try to find the link for you and, and see if I can hook you guys up with this brush. If not, you can go to Google brushes and stuff and see if you can find it. There's pretty, there, there is a lot of other spark brushes out there. So I'm just gonna press D on the keyboard here and reset my color palette and go to white. Now I'm gonna add my spark in there. But I also want the spark to go over the character. So it looks like the spark's going over his leg. So I'm gonna drag this up above gradient overlay layer and, I, and as you see it covers a shoe now because it is a little bit bright but you want to bring the shoe in so what I'm going to do here is first off I'm going to remove the reflection layer make sure you're on the spark layer when you remove it so I just selected it with the rectangular marquee tool and press delete and what I'm going to do here is duplicate this layer and I'm going to go back to the normal spark layer and what I'm going to do is just drag it over a bit so it's just offset ju just a little bit and I might try a linear dodge you can even try an overlay and as you see it adds that nice little vibrant color so it looks like it's blurring a bit so now that you got that done you want to find the layer right here and I'm going to remove it with a hard round because there's some parts on this I don't want the the sparks coming in on especially around the toe area so you simply just brush it out I'm going to go out to the other spark layer here and remove the other sparks you don't want in there <coughs> And I'm going to leave this spark that's coming over his knee so it looks like it's wrapping around him just a little bit. And these spark layers, you can actually even move them over a bit. You can even merge them. But then it, like once you merge them, you lose that blending mode. So we'll leave that like that. So what I'm going to do now is go down to the spark layer. I'm going to zoom in and go towards his toe here. I'm going to make his toe stand out. 19. Get rid of this top part. And you just keep clicking around until you find that edge of the toe.
Now I'm going to zoom out. And as you see, it looks like his toe was sliding on that ground there pretty decently. And you bring the character down with the gradient overlay. Bring him down a few pixels. Alrighty, so now that we got that, that's just pretty much coming together. What you want to do now is simply click our bulky layer, and what we're going to do is simply go to Edit, Free Transform. Well, actually, we can try a perspective, and we're just going to angle this just a bit. So it looks like it's angling. So now we want to also angle our sparks here. So we go to the top spark copy here, go to duplicate layer, and what we're going to do is edit free transform, then once that's done we just click up here where it says H, which is the height, and put a negative in front of that 100%, and we're going to hold the shift key down and just drag it down. So this is going to flip that layer for us 100%, it's going to enable us uh, to make the reflection here. We're also going to add some perspective to that too. But first we want to brush it out. Actually you can probably even leave the perspective for this because the spark will be sparking in pretty decent pretty decently, so just brush it out. The soft round so it looks like it's sparking out. Now to see his toe area screwed up a little bit there with that spark, so what I'm going to do here is to fix that air is I'm going to use a soft round and I'm just going to blur it in just a little bit. So it looks like it's sparking back just a bit. Now that that's done, we can start adding extra effects. You can also add a line above the lens flares to uh, make the reflection like the floor area stand out even more so you can even just make a 1px line holding down shift key so it's a straight line so now I'm going to actually zoom in because you want to get it perfectly aligned to the where the floor is so go to 100% and here you can even set it to overlay color dodge if you set the color dodge you want to set it to a, like a decent gray so you want might want to bring it down a bit and I see that flows pretty decently over there to the right side and then even behind them you can even add a lens flare behind them I never did this on my original, but I'll try it on this tutorial here. <coughs> so I'm going to fill my canvas in with black. I'm going to go to Filter, Render, Lens Flare. I'm going to use the same lens flare I did before. And I'm just going to put it right behind him here. You can go to Color Dodge, Overlay. Overlay darkens everything, so you might not want to stick with that. You can try linear dodge. And as you see, that brightens up a lot around his edges. You can try even screen. I want to bring that out just a little bit, though. I might actually put it right on his knee so it looks like it's very super bright there. Also, I'm going to add a little blur to it, a Gaussian blur, just to blur it out. Yeah, I might actually go with color dodge. Nah. Linear dodge. Yeah, linear dodge looks good there. So I'm actually going to drag that layer in a bit. You can put it up around his head, his toe, even down here by his foot. His foot actually looks the best spot for it. And as you see the round edges here, so you simply just go around with your eraser tool, 300px. Just brush it out. So it all blends in. Now that we have these lens flare copies here, what we're going to do now is zoom in. And if you did my Eclipse slash uh, lens flare tutorial, 
you'll notice that and what I'm going to do is you find your layer which would be layer 2 for the right side here and you just softly erase those edges out and it gives you a nice smooth little glows. You see it's pixelated right there, but it that type of stuff happens when you uh, use different blending modes. I'm going to go layer 3 now. As you see, I'm going through this pretty quick, so i got to make it a quick tutorial. I'm going to go back to layer 1. Soften the edges out. Back to layer two. Back to layer one. Where's that layer three over there? That looks like it, eh? So, yeah, you just uh, erase these layers out so you get a nice smooth effect. And, yeah, that's pretty much my tutorial on how to make a pretty quick desktop wallpaper for yourself this is how you can be unique and show show you like your desktop off and be like yeah I was the one that made this so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to rate five stars and subscribe there's gonna be a lot more tutorials coming up I'm building up a whole bunch of tutorials to mash in together and start making web like web templates and all that other stuff that's gonna be coming out soon especially the interface I'm gonna be getting into interface design which is very advanced but I'm pretty sure I have a few followers uh, and subscribers that are interested in learning those those types of effects I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and uh, stick around for a lot more